My name is Hugh Possingham. I'm Professor of Mathematics and Ecology at the University of Queensland. We've seen how dangerous it is to mismanage fisheries. We lose access to food and profit. So now we need to think of how we solve this problem. There are many kinds of solutions to fishery management. In fact, there's no one solution that fits all circumstances. So we're going to discuss a variety of different ways of managing fisheries that keep them sustainable. And we're going to do that with some examples. If the fishery is completely unmanaged, we call it an open access fishery. This occurs when there are no regulations and boats enter the fisheries as they wish. And it leads to a situation we call the tragedy of the commons, which Hardin wrote about in 1968. So let's imagine somebody discovers a new fish population to exploit. There are lots of fish, and the first boat in the water makes a huge amount of profit because the biomass is so high. Because they're making a profit, a whole heap of other boats enter the fishery. They also make some money, but as they're entering the fishery, the effort is getting larger. The population is falling below that half carrying capacity where it's most profitable and sustainable. And then, even while they're making some profit, but not much, more people enter the fishery. At this point, the fish stock is almost completely collapsed. Nobody's making hardly any money at all. And this is what is called the tragedy of the commons, because nobody was regulating the system and what would have been a productive system now is useless. So how can we avoid the tragedy of the commons? One is to just manage quotas, that is say, uh, only a certain amount of fish can be caught by all the fishers. Another is to try and manage effort, which might be there can only be so many boat days out on the water catching this fish. And finally, we can have rights-based management. Rights-based management puts the ownership of the fishery in the hands of a few people. They own the fishery. And this is what Juan Carlos Castilla is going to talk to us about in terms of Chilean near coastal fisheries where rights-based management has left to long -term sustain led to long-term sustainable profits. Effort-based management does, however, have some dangers. It seems quite logical. Uh, if you maintain effort, then you can keep the fish stock high. However, even if we do, say, only so many boats out on the water, or, for instance, we might say you, can only, uh, you can't spearfish while you're scuba diving, you can only spearfish without scuba gear, um, people find better ways of catching fish because people are very smart. They get better boats, they get better ways of locating fish. So effort often creeps, even when we're trying to keep the fishery sustainable. Some types of fishing are certainly worse than others. So even with some of these management regimes, we have to be careful not to have fisheries that damage the actual habitat the fish live in. For example, trawling, dynamite fishing. These fisheries can cause not only habitat destruction, but also complete trophic cascades. That is, if the top fish are removed, the rest of the whole ecosystem is severely affected and the food web severely affected. So what are the solutions to the destructive practices? Simply to ban them and to educate people about the damage they cause to their long-term livelihoods. We can also provide positive incentives for them to move away from destructive practices to more sustainable practices. The solution to stopping habitat destruction is to ban those practices or through education. The final solution to fisheries management is to have a marine reserve system. This means totally protected, protecting some parts of the sea. This provides a refuge for fish for any, from any kinds of exploitation. The fish in the reserves get larger and denser and that causes spillover, which then enables people to harvest the fish as they move outside the reserve. Spillover occurs in two ways, one through adults moving outside the reserve, but also because large adults in a reserve have a lot more eggs and have a lot more larvae, they move outside the reserve, they mature outside the reserve and are caught by the fishers. In the next section, we're going to look in detail about how to design uh, marine reserve system that meets biodiversity needs and fisheries needs at the same time.